My Lord and my God, my Lord Jesus Christ, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. It's a Sunday, the day of the Lord, the day of your resurrection. Today's liturgy presents a text from St. Mark, chapter 8. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And you, Jesus, asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. St. Matthew records Peter's reply as, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And in reply to you, Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Peter is the one who dares to reply. He's impulsive. And Jesus says, I talk to you, I can try to imagine the scene. All the others looking at Peter as these words were pronounced, and Peter probably enjoying the moment when you turned to him and said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. And Peter being impulsive, Come on, did you see that, guys? I really nailed it. <laughs> and then you, Jesus, turned to all of them and warned them not to say anything about what Peter had just revealed through what the Father had revealed to him. You, Jesus, turned to all of them and warned them not to say anything about well, what Peter said. It's the truth. But just don't go blabbering about it. Okay? Be discreet. And then you start speaking about your death in these words. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. The apostles fall silent, save for one impulsive man who thinks rapidly to himself, the Messiah of just, he's the Messiah, the son of the living God. Suffer greatly, be rejected, killed. What's all this about? No way, Jose. Besides, you just put me in charge, so no, I won't allow any of this talk. You, Lord, speak in no uncertain terms. Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Jesus, those are very tough words. Calling Peter Satan, I mean, you came down rather hard on him. Why did you react in such a way? In fact, I can't but help sympathize with Simon Peter because, frankly speaking, I don't understand suffering either. And being rejected and dying, why? You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. I guess what you are trying to tell me, Jesus, is that the cross will never really fit in my mind because the cross comes to me in different shapes and sizes, a little bit like Amazon packets. <laughs> Small, medium, large, XL, double XL, triple XL. If I had a choice, probably I'd rather choose the, the small cross. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. But Lord, I am human. <laughs> How am I supposed to go about being like you? 
Well, sometimes, Jesus, you speak to me through the lives of other people. The life of one person struck me in a short clip that I watched of the visit of the Predator Focus Day to New Zealand. I was in August 2023. You can just Google that, Predator Focus Day in New Zealand, and you'll find the clip. In that clip, a young lady introduced herself to the prelate in these words. My name is Jessica, and I am a mother of six children. I was diagnosed with aggressive brain tumour four months ago, and they told me I probably have less than one year to live. I guess you have more patience, you have more strength and more serenity to go through these things, and they are all things that St. Maria taught us. I think I'm a bit strange, but I'm very happy to have this cross. My question is, how do I pass on the message of hope that the will of God will bring us to heaven? And what hit me, those words, I'm very happy to have this cross. I'm very happy to have this cross. I am very happy to have this cross. And I was taken totally aback by the way she spoke without breaking down, she didn't sigh and cry and say, oh my and why. I can't even begin to imagine, Jesus, how I would react if tomorrow I were to visit a doctor and I were to be diagnosed with an aggressive brain tumor. You have less than a year to live. And I hear you speak to me gently. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. Well, thank you, Jesus, for helping me bump into this video clip. I've also attached a link to an article about Jessica Van Leeuwen that was written after her funeral because she died on the 30th of April this year, 2024. How did she live the last months of her life? I'm very happy to have this cross. So she had the ordinary tasks that she had always lived with a great enthusiasm. The funny thing is that she loved cows. <laughs> yeah, that was her, her passion, her work was to look after dairy cows, and of course, she loved her family. So she took care of her cows. <laughs> and she also took great care of her husband and her six children. Her husband said she wanted to live longer for the sake of her children. At the same time, she would tell people, whatever God wants, all I want is that my family gets to heaven. I just want everyone to get to heaven. And so, in the midst of having this cross that is a triple XL, she accepted the cross cheerfully. And this attracted many of her friends who rallied around her, praying that she may be cured. Some of them had not prayed in a long time. But Jessica's illness cheerfully born encouraged them to start again. And that even had its repercussions at home. Her little daughter, Anastasia, speaking to, to her grandmother about about death, I suppose. Anastasia, 11 years old, told her grandmother, if mum is going to be a saint, then she will be a saint for farmers and she'll be a saint for mothers. How beautiful. An 11-year-old child can grasp the beauty of the way her mother carried the cross, losing herself for your sake, Jesus, because she didn't sigh and cry and say, oh my, and why? Rather, she accepted, I am very happy to have this cross. I'm very happy to have this cross. I'm very happy to have this cross. But Jesus helped me to think like you do. I want to lose myself and find life for your sake. What cross is weighing heavily on me now this Sunday? Is it an unexpected sickness, a cold, a stomach ache, a headache? Or maybe something more serious, someone who has let me down. I'm disappointed about something that happened at work, at school, or I simply find myself worried. Well, help me to think 
like you, Jesus. I mean, to reflect on the example of Jessica Van Loon, who shows that we can take up the cross, even if it is that XL, double XL, triple XL cross. St. Jose Maria says that when we are faced with the unexpected cross, we can say these words slowly, heart, heart on the cross, heart on the cross. Do I have a crucifix that I carry with me in my pocket or in my purse? It's a good idea to, to kiss the cross in the moments I suffer. And as I kiss the cross, I can say those words, heart, heart on the cross, heart on the cross. Jessica received a triple XL cross and she accepted it. She loved it. She was very happy to have the cross of her illness. May I also accept and love and try to be happy with my cross. We celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows on September 15th. It commemorates the profound union of heart that existed between your mother Jesus and your own sufferings, through which she experienced many interior sorrows as a consequence of your mission. Well, Mary, my mother, Our Lady of Sorrows, Help me always to find meaning in the unexpected cross. Remind me to kiss my crucifix and to say those words, heart, heart on the cross, heart on the cross. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My mother immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.